how's it going? And welcome to episode 38 of Someone Who Isn't Me. My name's Daniel P. Carter, and my guest on today's swim is Joe Duplantier. And uh, Joe is frontman, guitarist, songwriter, and producer for French metal band Gojira. Over their 20 plus year career, Gojira have established themselves as one of the greatest bands in heavy music, I think. Um, supremely heavy with a technicality and aesthetic that sets them apart from a lot of others in that world. Um, that's how I feel about it anyway. I think they're amazing. Over the course of seven studio albums, they've achieved great things and are lauded by fans, critics and peers alike. Today, as I record this, the band have just released their latest album, Fortitude, which is an amazing collection of songs that showcases not only their amazing playing, but also their long-held views on ecology and empathy and spirituality. Over the course of this conversation, Joe and I discuss the new record and all the things that are encompassed within it. We talk a bit about their recent call to raise awareness for the current destruction of the Amazon and the plight of the indigenous people that live there. And we talk a bit about life during the pandemic and how the little things in life can be some of the toughest at times like these. It was wicked to catch up with him. And I, you know, I really enjoy all those kind of tangential side notes that go on um, in a conversation like this. And I hope that you will, too. Joe, like all the guys in the band, is a great artist and like many others that occupy that role, he's got that common trait, which is um, self-depreciating humour. And I feel like you'll hear a couple of times in this that when we were chatting, he almost makes like a jokey caveat after certain things that he said where he feels like he might be taking himself a little bit too seriously, which I personally find super endearing. And I think it goes to show what a smart and humble guy that he is. As I said, Fortitude is out now. Um, So if you haven't already gone and listened to it, you should check out as soon as you're through listening to this episode, obviously. Uh, And I think it shows that the band's at the pinnacle of their creativity. As I said, Fortitude is out now. So if you haven't already gone and listened to it, um, you should check it out as soon as you're through listening to this episode. I think it shows the band at the pinnacle of their creativity, but it also shows where heavy music exists in the wider world right now as well. This is Joe Duplantier of Gojira. So, how are you doing anyway? I'm doing great, thank you. Yeah? You're back in France? Yes. 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 Do you I want uh, an honest answer or do you want to just a, uh, yeah, I'm fine answer? No, I always want the honest answer. I okay. wouldn't ask you otherwise. So, uh, I'm going to make you uh, feel super uncomfortable right off the bat. I'm done with interviews. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll bet. <laughs> But uh, no, no, no. Uh, honestly, it's everything we worked for for uh, for many years. You know, is to get there, uh, yeah. to fame. You know, to world fame, whatever. <laughs> <It is. laughs> uh, what I mean is, no, I can't complain because we have too many interviews. It's great. It's really great. It's yeah. just a lot. You well, know? that you know that that means you're popular. So it means you're doing something. Well, generally, it means you're doing something right. Yeah. So that's a beautiful thing, surely. But I get it. What number yes. am I? Am I like 473? Nah, you will never be uh, a number. You will never be a number to me. Thank Always you. Always be Dan. Thanks. Dan the man. Thanks. I appreciate that. Um, so we, should we just jump straight into it? Because this is going to be, I'm going to re- do this for my podcast. But okay. also we're going to use um, a load of it for the show as well. So we get okay. two for one. Otherwise, we'd have to do two interviews. And I feel like... You've probably done enough already, so let's stick to one, and then I'll, I'll multi-purpose it. Yes, yes. But uh, although I complain a lot about, you know, doing too many interviews to my management, to my wife, to my brother, and even to the interviewers, and although I complain, I'm uh, also very talkative, as you know, and I'm yeah. not uh, shy with my answers. I talk too much most of the time, so... You'll have plenty. I yeah. would always rather these things would be conversations rather than interviews as such. Although saying that, I made a bunch of questions uh, or conversation pieces to talk about. Um, <laughs> and and as you said, let's get uncomfortable straight from the start. Let's just do that. <laughs> yes, exactly. Okay, let's so do that. Was, I'm ready. So I was thinking, right? So the album title obviously means to have courage in the face of adversity. But do you think that that's enough to have courage? just courage and if so yeah is that enough we'll go to the next bit in a minute um no obviously it's not enough you know you also need water (laughs) Uh, 
in order to not become dehydrated. You need a roof above your head if it's cold, if it's raining. Uh, you need love, compassion. Um, but uh, it's it's you know it's it's only it's not a statement what humanity needs uh, only, but it's it's just uh, something we wanted to express, I guess, with this album. Yeah, it was a vague idea. Um, you know, it's it's music, it's poetry, it's metal, it's uh, just uh, tracks, it's songs. Art. Yeah, but it's art though, isn't it? I'm sorry. It's art though. It is. Yeah, yeah. It's art. Yeah. I, I just thought that my thinking was that we're near the brink as far as uh, um, the planet goes and the way we act and the way we treat the habitat that we're part of. And then started making me think about the idea of, of courage and how to overcome these situations that we find ourselves in. And that you could almost view it from a perspective as that, that courage needing to be to make quite harsh decisions. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, we're like 7.7 .7 billion people on the planet now. It's like doubled in the last 50 <laughs> years. Um, do you, yeah, yeah and, I, and I was thinking, like, is it is it a bit too late? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, but uh, um, I, I watched a, a show on YouTube called uh, Vsauce. It's this uh, incredible guy who's talking about the universe and uh, um, some fun facts. Mm. Uh, about physics and quantum physics and uh, facts about the planet, why the seasons, uh, how our calendar uh, happened to be our calendar and, and, and all that stuff. And uh, one, w one episode of that Vsauce show that I highly recommend um, is what would happen if we would all get together, all the people of Earth, all together in a herd and count to three and all jump together mm. uh, would we be able to change the course of the planet um, are we heavy enough as a humanity to even have a small impact on the on the course of the planet on its crazy journey in the universe the answer is yes mm. by uh you know a billionth of uh you know an inch or whatever <laughs> yeah uh, so, so, so almost nothing, but we do have an impact. Um, well, we do clearly, but we do. But you know what? The, the fun, the fun thing, and the, uh, that's not what I'm telling. Why I'm telling this story, the Vsauce story, is there was one fun fact in this video, and it's not that the f it's not the fact that we could indeed have an impact on the trajectory of the planet with our little weights, your human weights. Mm. It's the fact that. He says, you know how much space it would take if you would put all the people of Earth together, uh, grouped in a, in a herd. Mm. And uh, uh, and I, s I thought to myself, oh my, you know, how much, you know, how much space would that cover all the people of Earth, more than 7 billion people standing side by side in a herd? And I thought, is it like big, like a country or two countries or something like that? You know, maybe, mm. you know, Perhaps Spain and Portugal and a little bit of France, you know, that size. The answer blew my mind. It's way less than that. Go on. It's the surface of Los Angeles. Wow. And this is a very legit uh, show. This yeah. guy is not messing around. He's uh, an incredible smart guy. He's a scientist and he's, he's the way he expresses himself. It's um it's very uh, pleasant to listen to. And you can tell he did a lot of researches and... and um, so I believe him and then it's sort of, it makes sense. We're not that many people on the planet. When you take a plane or, or train and you go cross country, you, what you see is mostly, you know, empty spaces, yeah. um, uh, empty of humans. You see a lot of, uh, you know, forests and mountains and ice caps and oceans, you know, the oceans cover 70% of the globe and so on. Yeah. Um, so I think... The problem we have is not uh, the space per se, but it's more uh, rather the r the way we use the resources and the way we we consume too much. We're not it's we're not sustainable yeah. in the way we uh, behave and eat and drink and breathe and uh, burn stuff and dig for fossil fuel and then put it in the water. Um, it's uh, by the way, check this out. Vsauce is incredible. I will Every do. Every single I'll episode. <laughs> yeah, it's really good. Nice. The guy is called Michael. He's also very funny. Okay, I'll check it out for sure. 
Yeah, yeah that, that that is quite mind blowing actually. That that yeah, you think about how many people there are on the planet, but it's it you know yeah. side by side, it would be such a tiny amount of space. That's yeah, that's it's like nuts. if you have fleas on your you know fleas on your or light uh, come how's it called uh, lights on your head. Yeah. And it would all, you know, you have an impression that it's everywhere and it's scratching. But if you really, if you could gather them all, it would be, oh, that's, that was it, you know. <laughs> so that's humans on the earth. <laughs> yeah, we are fleas. <laughs> yes, <laughs> definitely a parasite of some sort uh, in a way, you know, from a certain angle. Yeah. I can't wait, but yeah, I can't uh, help but using that word uh, parasite. Yeah, uh, to describe humanity, but also we're not just that. We're not just a stupid brain trying to suck on something bigger than us. We're also more than that. We're uh, ca capable uh, capable of uh, compassion and and um, uh, great things. And uh, you know, we have a potential, a divine potential of uh, um, togetherness and community and, uh, and connection, love and emotions, connections. Yeah, it's yeah. beautiful. Yeah, I, I was talking to Einar Selvik recently from Wardruna, and we were sort of discussing basically animism and, and the idea that that used to be the default existence, how people were fully aware that they were just a small part of one whole thing that was, that the whole thing was this living electric being that we were just a tiny part of. And then there was that sort of paradigm shift and the, and the awareness of our place in a wider scheme of things kind of changed. And, and that that would be the, the reason why we're, um, or it could be the reason why we're in the situation we're in. Because this is something that I think that your, your band has, you know, you, you've, you've been speaking about it for such a long time. Yeah. I mean, very overt yeah. as well with, with things like, you know, Toxic Garbage Island from Way of All Flesh and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. But I think about these things like just like a, a child would, uh, you know, uh, react to something like that. It's very childish, um, our approach. And I speak for, for my bandmates too, because they're uh, like me. Uh, we're a bit, bit naive. We're not very sophisticated. Somehow we are through our music, you know, so it's something. Uh, but it's a very, very uh, direct sort of reaction. And um, uh, we're very emotional. <laughs> you know, we think about the Amazon and we have tears yeah. in our eyes. And. Uh, or the, the the oceans and the animals and uh, I'm not try I'm not overthinking it too much. I'm j I just feel sad for the fish. Uh, I feel sad for uh, all these beautiful trees and these precious animals and you know the frogs that that are disappearing and the, the lions. Um, yeah, no, I hear you, and I, I I think that um, I oh, will get to that in a minute. But yeah, I hear what you're saying. Mm. I think it is important to to be aware of these things and then if you if you make art to then use that as not as a platform because i think that implies therefore that a certain degree of sort of preachiness and uh, and uh, and i know yeah. that that turns so many people off straight away no one wants to be yeah. like lectured at no know? of course of course but i yeah. think there's a fine line yeah yeah between raising but awareness yeah you were saying as a platform yeah do you do you feel that, that you have a duty to do that or is that just something that moves you and that's and obviously art is a is um is a sum of the things that have meaning within within the artist's life and, and i i guess it's just that you feel like these things move you and so therefore it makes its way into the art or do you feel that that you have like um not an obligation but but um mm -hmm. but a platform to do though talk about those things yes uh, yeah, uh, I totally understand your question. I think uh, I'm, a, I'm a world of paradox, uh, especially right now that I have to answer this question. <laughs> uh, I'm so torn. I don't know what to say. Yeah. Because in a way, yes, I, I and it's something I, 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 I say very often. We have a responsibility, responsibility as artists to point out what's... Uh, what's wrong and um, the evil that men do. And um, it seems like everybody's sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it seems like everybody's sleeping, you know, let's wake up. But how pretentious it sounds and how preachy and, and I don't want to be that guy at all. But yeah. somehow, you know, I start singing in, in front of the mic and, and that's what comes out. And then people dig it. 
and then they ask me questions and then I answer the questions on fancy microphones and stuff and then when I listen to what I whatever I say afterwards when it's online I cringe shit my pants <laughs> <laughs> I cringe definitely cringe big time so right now I'm meditating uh, very concentrated to not look uh, too goofy or stupid you know in my answers i don't want to be come across as uh, uh you know preachy or uh, you know when when i uh, when we call the album fortitude is in the first place we want to inspire ourselves mm. uh to be strong you know and to overcome the day uh, bringing the kids to school is a big challenge for me you know yeah Yeah. Sometimes I have to really gather myself um, just to face very simple situations. Um, it's easier for me to go out in the wild and build uh, build a house, you know, under the rain with nothing but my bare hands than to bring the kids to school and, and just face the parents and just say hi to them. Yeah. And do the small talk thing. For me, it's far more impressive in a way. Um, so it's, it's 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 strange, you know. I feel I feel strong, but I feel so weak at the same time. And I, I'm I'm not um, my carbon footprint is uh, not uh, neutral either. Mm. You know, I'm part of this society. I have a car. I take planes. I take buses, and then I write songs about, you know, uh, how we need to to save the world and and stuff like that. But I, again, I would like to remind uh, the listeners and stuff that we're just a band, you know, we're writing songs. Now, of course, we're trying to organize things. Sometimes we, we're doing things like for the Amazon with our single Amazonia or when we partner up with Sea Shepherd in a way um, because we, we, we understand that it's these are important matters, important things. Yeah. Uh, and we should uh, educate ourselves more on what's happening and to, in order to make smart choices every single day of our lives when we buy something and when we even talking to people uh, if you if you try to be more compassionate and patient with people and and listen more you can do miracles in somebody's life or somebody's day you can make somebody's day just by smiling to them i agree a, a homeless person you know if you look at a homeless person in the street instead of ignoring that ignoring them uh, just a look could uh, go a long way i really believe that i, really I believe no i 100 percent agree with you i think that's very true I, and i find it's interesting you saying that what is considered to be normal daily life can can be so tough because it can and and yeah. um and i think that we've been the way that society is now we're so insular and atomized and everybody is is in their own little world and and so focused on what they're doing and And a time when we should be way more connected and that, as you say, the, the communication between people should be so much easier and, and it's so important. It's not. It's yeah. done It's done the opposite. And I think that, you know, there's whatever you can get into the reason why that's happened and, and maybe that that's a deliberate thing. And But then you start to put the tinfoil hat on a bit, but which I'm a subscriber to anyway. <laughs> but I think that, <laughs> that daily life is, it is difficult. And I think at a time like now, so much more so because of because of what's going on has amplified everything and it, it's made things so yeah day-to-day -day life is is tough and you know p a lot of people would be like oh it's, life's so tough for you guys i mean yeah of course it's tough for everybody and 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 some people have have it really really badly and, yes. and and at times it is heartbreaking to even sort of read those stories and think about those things and and interact it's almost beyond uh it's almost yeah it's almost impossible for us to really have compassion to some of the people that you know are in real real pains because you when you see how, how hard it is to just go catch the bus or wake up in the morning or uh you know go to work or face social situations i get very anxious and social situations i'm doing a little better i have my tricks and uh but uh when you think then that some people are under um uh, attack they're being shot at or they have to they're being uh beat up or, or orphans you know there's some uh, horrible in africa there was a lot of conflicts um uh, kids witnessed their entire family being slaughtered in front of them why how far does it go you know Mm. Um, if just uh, uh, awkwardness and uh, you know laziness can be so tough, 
mm. for in our Western societies, you know, simple things, little things um, that are almost invisible with a, you know, a naked eye. Yeah. Uh, th this toughness there. Imagine what some people experience yeah. in this world. Maybe there's a threshold when it's too hard, something disconnects and you don't feel the pain anymore. Mm. Um, but it's interesting to think about that. Yeah. For sure. And um, talking when we released um, uh, our single Amazonia and we did this charity uh, mm. for the indigenous communities and we did the auction and the donation thing on this platform, um, I was fortunate and I was very humbled um, to talk with some of the indigenous leaders and they shared their reality. And after several stories, um, I heard, you know, from their everyday life, I felt my legs were shaking because mm. I felt that was a reality that I'm very, very far away from. And even though um, I, I, I care a great deal and I'm doing everything in my power right now to make a little difference um, with the help of, you know, the metal community and, and some activists that are guiding my steps. Yeah. It was a little effort. Um, it was maybe two months i want to say on the phone uh, until late at night because i was talking i'm in france right now so communicating with america some people in new york and some people in brazil and uh, some meetings and some texts and i had to film myself talking to explain the project because otherwise it was not going to really come across and i felt i was doing so much you know mm. uh, but but that's it now i'm i'm you know i don't have that much to do about it um, and people, and I keep answering interviews all day and people ask me, uh, ask me about my uh, activism. Oh, you're an activist, you're doing this and that. <laughs> but really, uh, what I'm doing, I'm drinking coffee and answering interviews. I'm not on the field fighting, risking my life. Yeah, um, but but I, I don't think there's any hypocrisy in that. I think the fact that bringing awareness and money um, to, to help in those causes is, yeah. is, is a huge amount of work. You know, even if you feel like, even if like the next day when you've done a bunch of stuff, you can go, right, okay, right, now I'm going back to normal life. That doesn't alter the fact that, that you did those things and the effects of those things will be felt in those people's lives for quite some time. So yeah. I don't think there's any... Um, no, I agree. I, I agree. It's it's also a selfish thing because in a way, and I don't want to, you know, drag on that word selfish, but I want to mm. say in a way it's almost selfish because it makes me feel so much better about myself doing yeah. a little, you know something so but it's a win-win situation again we're in we're in a society uh you know impacted by christianism and and guilt and the idea that we should suffer and if we don't suffer something's wrong you know mm. um but it's okay to to be happy also and to care about people that suffer and to have a normal you know uh life um, uh, it's okay to complain even though we're not in the worst position in the world. It's okay to, you know, to... So, uh, but yeah. it's rather... I, I'm not saying that it's not okay, but what I wanted to say is that uh, there's there's a lot we can do that's going to... It could take a little of our time, a little money or a little energy and make a, a difference to other people. Um, and I reflect on how good we have it compared to, uh, you know, 80% of the planet or 90% of the planet for sure. Hmm. Yeah, I agree. And I think that awareness, <laughs> but that awareness, <laughs> that awareness uh, is a big thing though, right? Because my, a lot of people aren't aware of that. They, they drift through their life and have no awareness that there are other people around them, let alone other people that yeah. are on the other side of the planet or the other side of the street suffering terrible yes. things and yes, and absolutely. i don't i don't i'm not necessarily angry at those people no. because they're just they're just living their own existence and that's fine as long as it's yeah. not actually willful ignorance i think that's the difference um well ignorance uh, unfortunately the, these day and age is uh, is a crime you know, <laughs> we can't afford to <laughs> remain ignorant and and to say the planet is fine <laughs> you know? yeah yeah, it's not positive thinking. It's not uh, projecting something good on the world to say the planet is fine. Yeah, there's, there's no global warming. Yeah, exactly. You could say yes, there there are problems, uh, 
there is global warming. We should reduce uh, we should reduce tremendously our consumption of a lot of things. Mm. Um, but uh, we'll make it. Yeah, I think so. I I have hope. Yeah, planet is fine. I yeah, me too. Uh, by default. Yeah, I find it <laughs> I find it worrying at times when. Um, this kind of ties in w- with one of the tracks in particular, but um, you know when you have people like um, Elon Musk, that's like, right, we need to get we need to get out to other planets. Let's go to Mars. Yeah. Let's terraform Mars, and then we'll make a new planet to live on. It's like, well, we've got a planet that that is perfect for us, and in fact, it's, it's perfect. so it's so perfect. We actually are, are, we're here because of that. Um, exactly, we got elephants uh, <laughs> for Christ's sake. A few of them left. We have yeah. giraffes. What are you going to find on Mars? <laughs> you know, larvas? Yeah. yeah. Know. It made me think of another world. You know what I actually thought of when I first listened to that song? It made me think of, I'm terrible for making connections between songs. Like, I'll hear a song and I'll be like, oh, that makes me, you know. And I can't help but do that. And I know that's super annoying for people. It's like if I paint <laughs> something and put, someone will go, oh, yeah, that looks like so-and-so. And I'll be like, yeah, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> of course it does, Typical. because I love Shoot. their work. But yeah, another world made me think of after the gold rush. You know, Neil Young. No, you don't know that's okay. So like the last yeah, version, like <laughs> not four. musically, but yeah. just kind of the idea. Because in the um, in the last verse of after the gold rush, it says, uh, yeah. "What are the lyrics?" It's uh, after the gold rush. what a great title, by the way. Yeah, after yeah. The gold rush. It's um, like the I think the the last it, it tweet, like in the song Neil Young saying about having this dream about seeing a spaceship and people being loaded onto it, like these chosen people being loaded onto the spaceship with the idea of, and it, and it's the lyric is like flying mother nature's silver seed to a new home. And it's just like the sadness he's feeling as he's one of the people left behind because everything's, I, I assume because everything's fucked and, and they're just off to somewhere new to like repopulate. Mm. But yeah, maybe that that's weird how, um, I don't know. Maybe that's probably not the the ideal uh, connection, but I like it, it. It made me think of that. I'm reading the lyrics right now. It's very interesting. I'm I'm gonna look at it again. Uh, yeah, the idea of space exploration, finding another world and stuff. It's so. Uh, there's so much to say about this. It's 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 highly symbolic and um, yeah, and incredible. But I'm I'm in the the business of uh, space travel, <laughs> but not. Not with real rockets and stuff, but with songs, you know? Yeah. And uh, From Mars to Sirius was already that. Inner paths to outer space. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, Another World um, was a very interesting song for us to release. There's a bunch of new things on this album, Fortitude, uh, that uh, people don't necessarily talk about at first uh, glimpse, but there's two things I can think of that are a bit different is... Another world is a tantrum, and it's rare for us to 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 make tantrums in songs. You know, yeah. usually we're let's all calm down, <laughs> let's all you know be centered and and loving and fix things. You know, and here yeah. in this song is like, no, I want another world. I'm out of here. You know, it's yeah. a tantrum. <laughs> and uh, another thing is with the song Amazonia, it's we're we're uh, calling a song. A speci- like a specific location on, on earth when mm. usually we're more in the realm of uh, symbols and, and tales and, you know, slaying the dragon and um, legends and uh, myths. Archetypes. And, yeah, archetypes, yeah, yes. And also complicated, sophisticated concepts like... That's a very that's a metal thing, right? Yeah, you know, using using weird words or scary <laughs> words like Meshuga is doing. Yeah, um, ca- Cannibal Corpse is a different story. It's more gory, but Meshuga they will use you know you strange or transcendental you know uh, <laughs> um, absurdity. <laughs> um, and and on this album, we we as a writer, I try to use simple words. Yeah, more and more. I saw a comment on the last song that we published. Somebody said that uh, it was childish, the lyrics. At first, I was a bit offended. What do you mean it's uh, child? But it's totally true. There's something childish about uh, um, the lyrics. I think I think there's a difference between childish and childlike, though, right? Yeah. I think making something 
like childlike would it would I feel imbue it with an innocence and an openness and a um, easy understanding, but but childish oh. ju- maybe makes it. But yeah, and I get what you're saying. Okay, totally. thank you for that because yeah, yeah, yeah. That please, I I like that. Yeah, see, that's another thing about me being French and speaking English is that I think in French it would be the same word. So when I say childish, I I uh, yeah, I mean child childlike. I guess mm. that's good. I, I'll try to keep that in mind. Yeah, but you know what I mean. It's there's yeah. something. I like it. I like to be to show uh, simplicity and and um, it's almost naive, but in a good w- in a good way, you yeah. know. Uh, when you're uh, yeah, I think I think that comes across in the lyrics and the themes, but also in the music as well, because there's these moments where it feels like things that would have been, I assume, influences for you all since first getting into music that would have always been there, but now they feel like they're coming through a bit more and you're a bit more open to them and, and yes. things can be more stripped back and and direct and and beautiful yeah. as well as, you know, crushingly heavy and punishing at the same time. And <laughs> that's, that's the, the beauty of everything though, right? It's the balance of those things mm. to be able to counterpoint those moments. It, it only amplifies each other off of itself, right? Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's dynamic. Yeah, it's called dynamic. That's the in word my, uh, <laughs> in my head. You know. Yeah. Um, no, but it's it's exactly the way you described it. You know. That's, uh, yeah. It creates movement. It creates uh, something is activated. If it's all in re- in the red all the time, it gets a little. You know, you get numb after a while. Yeah. But it's it's good to have that life going on. Yeah, and I think I mean, I'm super I excited, man, with this record. the The production, how we, you know, the angle on the production. We we com- we were committing to every take with different amps, different guitars, different finding the the right texture, the right soul for each riff, uh, mm. which we never did before. Usually, we would commit to a sound yeah, yeah, yeah. that would be an average sound for the whole album and then create some dynamic at m- during mixing when there's a deadline soon <laughs> and you don't have time really <laughs> to think about it. Yeah, and yeah. you're stressing so much that you make all these mistakes. But when you track and you have more time, you can really have fun and, and use your intuition and, ah, let's plug it in a bass amp. Yeah. You know, and let's put this crazy distortion that belonged to my, that distortion pedal that belonged to my grandmother. Uh, it's so old and, and dusty and, uh, you know, and then you use a pedal and then you try, you capture that and that's yeah. it. You got it. You don't need to worry about it, uh, later at mixing, like everybody says, especially in metal. Yeah. Metal is full of nerds, <laughs> full of nerds. It is. I'm and, one. And, uh, I am one. So that's yeah, fine. I can agree too. with you. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah. But I'm trying to, to, to cure this, uh, little by little. Yeah, I don't want to be too nerdy. That's so true, isn't it? But it's all about oh, I've got. I need to find my tone. I found the ultimate tone, and then it's like yeah. that's it. So I just stick with that now forever. Yeah, and yeah, we won't yeah. worry that this passage of music, like you, you couldn't have done the title track, you couldn't have done Fortitude with <laughs> with the whole band at like standard setting, right? <laughs> yeah, it just wouldn't sure. work. And I think. Yeah. So this this is something I wanted to get onto is is that I've said this to you before I'm sure but I see your band in a kind of in quite a special light in a similar realm as bands like um like Neurosis and Tool and mm. and Radiohead bands that that have a, a very specific thing about them so that you can you if if you were to play a Gojira song to anyone that is aware of your band, they'd go, oh, of course, that's that's Gojira, in the same way that you could do that with with all of those other bands that I said about, right? <laughs> but well, that's cool. These are great references. And and I think that um, another thing that makes those bands so special and that, that your band fits in with those, well, there's two things, actually. The first being that I think that there's like an integrity and a spiritual worth that is vital to what your band does and it energizes the art of your band for me anyway that's what i get from it 
Like you're probably like, no mm. man, I just plug in and write riffs and that's it. But but for me, I feel like there's um there's something in there, and I think on the last record, obviously, the themes that that you were talking about you know, on yeah. on that record were very honest, and it imbued the the, the art with with something that gave the the whole thing a spiritual worth. Like I'm and. and yeah. And that and something that I took from that was the idea that you know that consciousness is more than an, than just like an artifact of us being a physical thing, right? That there's more Yeah. there's more than this. Absolutely. And and I think yeah. yeah, and I think that that's something that all of those bands have as well and um I think that continues straight away with with this record with um Born for One Thing, right? Uh, because it feels like Yeah. The idea of like, you know, what is that one thing to tame the greatest fear of all is to face the unknown or death and to experience a life and what that yeah. that would then impart after that life, perhaps. Yes. Or am I, is that me just like... <sighs> <laughs> well, it's you doing that, and it's uh, but makes <laughs> puts you right in the core of it. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Yes. But would you... No, it's, it's exactly what you said, yeah. It's... Uh, well, there's, you said a lot of things here. Sorry. Um, but one thing... No, 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 please. This, this is great. Um, the, 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 the question of uh, our uh, demise, you know, uh, the, the, the end of the whole humanity or the end of my life or one's life, you know, a person's life, mm. um, the end of the physical... Uh, manifestation of the spirit of the personality uh, has been uh, my main preoccupation as a writer. If I can call myself a writer, yeah, that's you know, a big word. But I do write words and print them on paper. So uh, as a writer, yeah, I would say the, the idea of death and uh, the imagination, the fantasy around death is basically you know um thinking about life when you think about death you think about life what is life what is death uh, it's almost like we have the key to life after we die you know in a lot of uh, traditions and a lot of uh, um in the bible and in uh, legends and mm. uh, the vikings you know they have their valhalla or whatever you know so there's always the promised land, the promise of uh, knowledge and truth and enlightenment, and we finally got gonna get all our answers. And sometimes, in certain books, they say that these answers are very different than what we expect, and the answer is far more simple and bright. And and uh, so, in a way, I'm looking forward to have that light, uh, to be in that light, and to be detached from. Uh, space and time and to be in this other dimension of uh, of absolute presence mm. uh, i like to write about it i like to write about the fact that everybody's scared of something that is only uh, a form of enlightenment i think mm. or maybe it's the end of everything and maybe you know one time a friend told me it's like you turn off the tv and that's it it's off it's off death is the end yeah but that uh, and that I, would that analogy doesn't even work though because those st that tv is still <laughs> it's still those signals are still in in the ether exactly. you can still turn the, the tv back on and somebody else can yes. see that that show you know yes and if you have special abilities maybe you can even <laughs> capture these uh waves these wavelengths so exactly that's i it. agree that's what i answered to the guy like well you take you use the tv analogy uh well uh, it's a perfect analogy the show is still running bro yeah you just can't see it well that's just it so, isn't it because i think yeah. that's just based on the limitations of what we are we all know that the human eye can only see within a spectrum of light that's so narrow even compared to other animals so what else is you know who's to say that that there isn't so well there is clearly so much more you know you said about quantum physics earlier as soon as you yeah. start looking into that you can see that as soon as you start talking about entanglement and two things interacting but have experiments changing when human consciousness is brought into it it's like of course i know should we start talking about black holes too <laughs> yeah you know it's mind-blowing all yeah. these uh 
thoughts and, and yeah, what are we the in the notion of infinity? My kids, I have two kids, uh, yeah, nine and seven. Now I have to think about their age. It's, cra it's crazy. You mm. have two also. Yeah, fourteen well, and twenty-two. Jesus! Yeah. Wow. <laughs> How's it going for you? Pretty good. Okay. <laughs> Pretty good. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And uh, but the, the, it's funny. My kids uh, ask me about uh, infinity a lot. <laughs> you know. Yeah. What is uh, inf Daddy? What's infinity? Is infinity infinity bigger than infinity? And I, uh, I usually say, well, infinity, infinity equals infinity, you know, a hundred times infinity equals one time infinity because infinity is not a number. Yeah. And, uh, and I, I think somehow it sums up the human, the limit of our, uh, you know, the conception of uh, infinity. Uh, it's very interesting because we need to put numbers on everything. Yeah. We need to measure everything. We need to count the amount of time we go around the sun and, and call it, you know, our age, you know. Yeah. Uh, we, need to, uh, we need to put numbers and names on everything. Uh, and somehow it separates us from life. Yeah. Um, I have a friend also who, who read a book and then talked about that book. And I'm very thankful because, you know, I didn't read the book, but through him, I got, <laughs> got the synopsis. Something. Yeah. Yeah. And it's about language and how um, it was, it was, it separates, you know, communities and tribes, whether you, r you write history or you don't, you know, indigenous people traditionally don't have history books, you know, they, it's a oral tradition. Yeah. And the way, some uh, communities, some uh, groups, some, you know, languages or some tribes name the trees, you know, by their function. And uh, the way we name things, okay, what is it, what is it over there? Oh, it's a, uh, it's an oak tree. Okay, got it. So you put the word oak tree and that's it. You, you wrap it up in your mind, but yeah. there's so much to that oak tree. A tree is a miracle. It's it's a seed that you put on the ground, and there's all these you know fibers and stuff that ap appear uh, out of the blue, and uh, yeah. water you know makes it happen, and all that. It's a miracle. So everything is a miracle around us. Yeah. And we put simple names on miracles, so we 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 don't have to think of the miracle. We put the word right here. It's like, who are you? Oh, I'm Dan Carter, or I'm Joe Duplantier. Oh, you're the singer of Gojira. Yes. Boom. That's it. Boom. 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 Yeah. That's it. Um, yeah, but, but then, in fact, of course. Yeah. But if if we didn't do that, can you imagine how difficult life would be? If we absolutely, yeah, because it would no, be like, what's course. that over there? It's an oak tree. Okay, great, I got it. But if someone said it's an oak tree, and did you know that when those trees grow, they form their own community and they feed each other over different seasons, and they use mycelia layer of of mushrooms to exchange energy across the entire forest. And if a tree is cut down, the other trees around it will still support it and give it nutrients and life under the soil to keep it alive. It's like, that's too much, dude. I just need to know it's an oak tree. So, <laughs> but I no, hear what exactly you're saying. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, putting names on things is what makes us human. And, yeah. And, and, and we, we store knowledge and we uh, store information and we, but, but there's a, tr this, there could be uh, traps uh, in that, just like a, a social security number and a, and yep. a name and, and surname and, and thing, then you, you, we, sometimes we, it's, it's merely a reminder that there's, there are things between, behind uh, appellations. Uh, there's realities behind words. There's yeah. realities behind someone's eyes. There's realities be behind an identity. Mm. Um, and I think um, if we're talking, you know, uh, to go back to, uh, for example, the the role of an artist in our society is is to remind people of that because we have the luxury to be in music all the time and 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 worry about concepts and sounds and textures and uh, and pleasure and 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 uh, uh, elevation of the soul, you know, through art and stuff. Yeah. Um, our duty is also to remind people that there's more to things than just how they are called and or how they look like. I agree. I agree because I, I, I feel art is is exactly that. An artist is 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 reacting to all those things whether they're aware of it or not. I'm sure we've spoken about this before, if not in an interview just between the pair of us, but that that yeah. um yeah, the art is is um 
the role of an artist is almost as a conduit to allow things to to manifest in the world through us. Absolutely, yes. Conduit, a conduit. <laughs> That's a good word. Yeah, it's a good word. I need, I need, to start, I need a. Let's take notes. <laughs> I need more words, more words, you more weapons, it. You more do tools. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Um, something that I wanted to ask you that's very specific and is probably wrong, but I was curious that when I listened to the Sphinx, that song in particular made me think about a bunch of very specific things, and okay. I and I would like to put them to you, and and you can say yes or no. Um, okay. Has it got anything to do with the French mystic René Schwala de Lubix? No. Uh, maybe, because I don't know this person, but maybe, maybe there's a link there. But Okay, because in... No. No, so he, he was like a, a French mystic and Egyptologist, and he, he said in like the 1950s that um, there was evidence for water and rain erosion yes. on the Sphinx. So, yes... <laughs> that <laughs> okay great because yeah. there's a yeah. guy called robert m shock as well who's who has sort of carried on talking about that yeah it's the idea that there was the idea that consensus history is not actually true as we as as we see it because if that is water damage on the sphinx and it is rain damage that's eroded it then it's been there for thousands of years longer Twelve thousand years at least yeah because that's the last time it was raining in this area. Yeah. So it's it's a reflection on our again the demise of civilizations. Exactly. Uh, if these great civilizations that you know maybe built the Sphinx, uh, if this evidence is true, by the way, you totally nailed it. Thanks. Damn it, you nailed it so hard it thinks it's Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's, uh, whatever. Um, yeah, because the lyric about yeah, sorry, this Go on. thing, yeah, it's all about that water on that head and that back. And I heard about that theory many times, and probably I read uh, what this person wrote, and I already forgot the name that you just mentioned. I'll send you and a link. Not very good. Yeah, yeah, because but yeah, the lyric is witness erosion, the rise and fall of man, right? Yes. Yeah. So, so, so it shows that these things have existed, and there was there was civilization before that, which then. <laughs> Then made me think about something else to do with the deserts, actually. But um, you know Robert Oppenheimer, who's like considered to be the father of the atomic bomb, the guy that basically mm -hmm. created the atomic bomb. When he, when they did the first tests for the ex uh, nuclear explosions, was in um, Alamogordo in New Mexico. There was this thing that was created in the desert, which is called Trinitite, because it was the Trinity test site, and it's like a type of glass that has been formed in the desert by the intense explosion of the of the nuclear the nuclear fire i guess right and similar desert glass has been found in libya and egypt and that would speculate that there was another ancient cataclysm in that area and that's why like cuz there there's theories that it would be meteorites that would hit that could cause this glass so seven years after the New Mexico tests, he was at a university in the US doing a lecture about them. And uh, one of the students asked him about those tests and they said, so these were the first nuclear tests and detonations. And he replied, yes, in modern times. Huh. Sure, why not? You know, molecules were existing forever. So if there was a civilization, it, would, it wouldn't be crazy to think that they did uh, discover the atomic... Uh, bomb or atomic power because all you have to do is split an atom in half right that's all you need to do <laughs> it was it was right there handy yeah. yeah so yeah i it's interesting super interesting uh oh my god i'm so curious but now at I'll the same time you know i read a lot about you know ancient civilizations and 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 yeah. aliens and pyramids and similarities between the incas and egyptians and uh rather the Atlantis existed or not, yeah. uh, and all that stuff. It's very interesting to think that advanced uh, you know, societies and civilizations to end up disappearing because of greed, because of they became numb 
and they wanted comfort too much and, and or too much competition or whatever yeah. happened. Uh, nuclear, you know, disaster would be that maybe too much competition. Yeah, and it's 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 a possibility that we could just vanish uh, tonight. I hope not tonight. There's some crazy. Or tomorrow night. I don't know. Can we do <laughs> tomorrow morning? <laughs> Can we do next week? <laughs> yeah. Well, after April thirty would be great. <laughs> I need I to drop my atom bomb. <laughs> yeah. That's my atom bomb. It's <laughs> it's our album. I want to drop my bomb. And then yeah. we can go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm just yeah, yeah, yeah. very uh, interested. <laughs> you totally nailed it, bro. Okay. Sphinx. Sphinx is all about that. The 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 yeah the uh, yeah. I guess it's not that cryptic. Okay. The lyrics. All right. Lastly, because I feel like we've we've spoken for nearly an hour. Um, when I said earlier about Gojira inhabits this sort of similar space as the other bands that I mentioned, right? Um, and that's because yeah. of the kind of themes and the worldview and the kind of art that the band makes but also i was thinking about each of those bands and your band as well has this legacy and influence on guitar music because like now i can't listen i get so much music sent to me right obviously because of the show and i'll listen to something and i can't hear anything with a pick scrape in it or a digitech whammy like on a riff you know to create that dynamic from a low to a high like over accentuate yeah. it without thinking of your band. So, <laughs> you know, in the over 20 years that your band's now existed in both its forms, I guess, right? We can say that. Yeah, it's 25 years, uh, pretty much. So how how do you feel about your influence and the and ongoing and what that will be in the future? Are you aware of it or do you not care about it? Do you not think about it or what? I, d I, don't, I don't think about it too much. I'm aware of it that we had... Uh, uh, after all these years, you know, uh, an impact and influenced other bands. But I, I, I see how that can happen. Um, I was influenced myself by so many artists. Of course. And they ignited a fire in me, you know, Metallica, Sepultura, Morbid Angel, Death, even Scorpion at some time when I was in, uh, before high school. Um, Iron Maiden, yeah. to uh, pantera uh i was m i was made of all these things and yeah. uh, uh it, it made our band and it gave us uh, a direction to follow and some guidance and in incredible inspiration and we 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 got together we we using the same formula the same setup two guitars one bass one drum and um you know it's not much that changed since the the first uh, you know Rock yeah. bands that happened in the yeah, 60s I, I, and stuff. Yeah, and and what w what we did is is just add our, our our thing and 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 stick together. So if anything, uh, it's the consistency that we never stopped touring and making albums, and we're always there, and we're you know we care and we're professional and we you know so it it's almost natural that at some point it, it has a, uh, an impact on somebody. You know, somebody who's, mm. you know, always there, touring, playing, touring, playing, and something cool comes out of it. And, uh, um, but it's, it's amazing, man. I, I have to pinch myself sometimes to, to check if, if this is really happening, you know, our yeah. band is, uh, successful and has, you know, having an impact on other bands and stuff. It's incredible. Yeah. And I bet those moments are really driven home when you're like, you know, when you're playing shows with Metallica, for example, or you're like, yeah, chatting with with James or any of those people yeah. that that you mentioned as being an influence to now be stood yeah. alongside those people is is quite a trip. Yeah, part of me didn't uh, realize it fully, you know, and I think it probably it's it's it takes a lifetime to, you know, we all sort of worry what people think about us, how we look to others, and mm. and. Uh, career you know i think about my career i don't think about just just about my art all the time i think about my career i'm, I'm you know i worry to you know the way I, you're going to perceive me and the, the, the things i'm going to say i like uh, you next time i'll last time i oh cool <laughs> yeah yeah next time i'll uh i'll see james hetfield you know how i'm going to behave am i gonna yeah you know you know my word i'm still a fan <laughs> yeah uh, so i'm trying to pretend that 
we're friends, but in fact, I'm a fucking you know fan fanatic, and I I I'm ch I, I forget how to talk and how to walk in front of James Hetfield. I, <laughs> it's crazy, but it it keeps me on my on my toes and uh, it reminds me that I'm I'm still a music fan, mm. and uh, I'm trying to stay humble. It's a good exercise. Yeah. But part of me became a bit more confident since the band has all this success. Um, my wife tells me that I, I'm, I'm um, cocky and, and pretentious and I take too much space at home and I believe her, you know? <laughs> so somehow it changed me not, not just for the better. And believe me, I'm trying my best to art, be articulate right now and to behave and to look cool. Uh, but God knows what's going to happen after this interview is done. I'm going to, you know, be a, maybe an asshole to my wife. I don't, I don't want that. I'm yeah. trying not to be an asshole, but I'm also an asshole sometimes, I guess. Yeah, yeah I think we all are. Uh, so I'm trying to put everything in perspective. So in the end, my conclusion is when you ask me, do you realize, you know, that you influence bands? What does it do to you and stuff? In the end, when I put everything together, um, I say it is what it is. That's my conclusion. Yeah. <laughs> I, I also, uh, there's something I talk about sometimes, and I will uh, just want to say this. Uh, this was a dream for us to be able to just play music, and it wasn't. I wasn't very specific. We, ne we never dreamed to be the biggest band in the world or whatever. But uh, have a band that, you know, is successful, have an audience, make a living with music. Um, that was our, our goal. Touring with Metallica was one of the goals. That check, we can check that box. Yeah. And uh, it was my dream, but now it's not my dream anymore. It's a rea it became reality. And it's, it's very interesting when you uh, reach one of your dreams. And I'm, sh I'm sure you've fulfilled many of your dreams too. I, you mm. strike me as somebody who's who did that, achieved that, at least some of your dreams. Yeah. It's interesting how when dream becomes reality, it's a bit, uh, it's a bit sad because you <laughs> lost your dear dream and it became your reality and, and the disillusion comes too because you, it's not exactly what you thought it was going to be and you still suffer from mosquitoes biting your ass or you know, getting old. There's something you can't escape. Mm. Um, so I'm trying to build new dreams now. Otherwise, I don't want to be dreamless. Yeah. What would they be? Uh, <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. I, I have to think about it, but I, I, I definitely want to be... Uh, uh, to reduce my uh, impact, my negative impact on others and on the world, you mm. know? Yeah. You know, we, we often talk about uh, carbon footprint, um, and this is something I, I think about. And uh, it's not neutral yet, but mm. maybe one day it'll be when I have a, uh, an, uh, an earth home, a, a, you know, sustainable home and, and solar power and all that stuff. And I will, yeah. I will never take a plane ever again or, uh, until planes are electrical, whatever it is. Yeah. But also the carbon footprint on others, you know, I want to yeah. have, I would like to be friends with my kids when they grow up and, uh, and all that stuff. But it's difficult. It's so subtle, everything, and we're such a product of our education and stuff. It's difficult yeah. to, to free ourselves from all these things. And I'd like to be. Uh, I'd like if my kids would call me when they're gone, when they're, when they live left the house, they would still call me and, and visit me. You know, mm -hmm. that that would be my dream, actually. I don't want them to disappear on me and be like, ah, oh, finally we're out of here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hear you. Nice. Thanks, mate. Thank you. That was great. Thank you to Joe for doing this episode. Also, thanks to Austin for helping to facilitate it. Um, you can listen to Fortitude now on all DSPs or pick up the vinyl online. It's out now on Roadrunner Records, and I'm looking forward to seeing the band play all these songs as soon as I can because... They're an incredible live band, and I think these are some of the greatest songs they've written. So, yeah, need to see that. Joe can be found on socials at Silver Chord Studios, and the band is on Gojira Official on Instagram and Gojira Music on Twitter. 
I'm Daniel P. Carter on everything. And the pod is at Swim Podcast. Thank you again for listening. Leave a review. Write a nice thing on iTunes. Click five stars. It makes a huge difference. Take care of yourselves and those that are around you that you love. In fact, just take care of everyone, really. I think it would be a better place if we did. I am out. Peace.